Hi there. Um, uh, moving a bit away from what I'm generally doing on Enerati, that is um, analog circuits or physics and maths, uh, let, let's look at something called the IIP3. Uh, I'm doing this out of a little selfish motive here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I myself am not able to understand this concept in, in, in complete, in, in, you know, in totality. So uh, I thought I'll put it up as a video and uh, uh, have it open as discussion. Uh, YouTube the comments are free for everybody to put up and I think we'll have a good open discussion if you can join in with me. Great, thank you. So, um, let's consider a few devices like uh, detectors, mixers, or even amplifiers for that matter. Right? Detectors and mixers are for frequency detection, mixing, frequency mixing, and all that. And amplifiers are just for amplification of signals, right? So, what all these uh, devices use are uh, nonlinear components like diodes, transistors, exters or transistors, and the like. So, because they have nonlinear uh, uh, components that are being used, their output is given by the Taylor series expansion A0 plus A1 V in plus A1 V A2 V in squared plus A3 V in cubed plus yeah, it continues like that. I'm not really going to discuss what Taylor expansion right now is. Uh, let's just go ahead with uh, what we have here. So A0 is the DC bias. Right? Any circuit does not start from zero. It has to be set at a certain voltage level and from there it starts functioning. So A0 is just a constant, it's just a DC bias that, the, that one of these circuits requires to function. The rest of them are correspond uh, they actually correspond to each of their uh, uh, system uh, system response and for example the first term here a1 I mean, a1 a2 and a3 are just constants so a1 times v in is a linear uh, term and this corresponds to the output of amplifiers right just linear amplification and this a2 v in squared is uh, nothing but detectors mixers and this term right here is a sub harmonically pumped uh, mixer I think uh, well, it really doesn't matter what it's what it corresponds to what I'm trying to mention here is if you have a if you have a nonlinear system the output is given by this big term here and in that, the, just the first term is DC bias would always be there. But if you're analyzing amplifiers, all you need to be concerned with is this for the output. And if it is detectors, only the, the this part, the V in square part, is important. If you're analyzing subharmonically pumped mixer, uh, all that is required is the A three V in cubed. And the rest of them, suppose for your analyzing this big name thingy here. The rest of them are just harmonics. Leave DC bias alone, but the rest of them are harmonics, like uh, undesired spurious signals, right? So if you're analyzing amplifiers, the rest of them are just spurious signals. So you don't need to be, uh, uh, and other than the output, if you have spurious signals, they're, they're bad for you, right? They're like noise. So, um, that's what it is. So we're, we're gonna consider a few cases and try to see uh, how these harmonics or how these little signals affect us. All right. So let's consider a case one where we have an input signal saying V in equals cos cosine of omega one t. Okay. <coughs> and um, after I write this, I will be giving, I will be assigning just an arbitrary value for omega one for, just for us to. Um, uh, understand it better and and the harmonics for this signal are given by m omega 1 the harmonics will happen at these frequencies like m omega 1 where m belongs to the integer groups okay it could be negative positive or anything sorry um, 
so in this term you will have harmonics happening where you will have suppose you draw them you draw an FFT I'm, I'm thinking uh, we're, we're kind of we have a good idea of FFT is what I'm thinking um, even if we don't it's pretty simple at, at the characteristic frequency if you call Omega one the characteristic frequency you will have a peak right so let's say Omega one we assign is at 10 so 10 would be your main signal and then at 20 30 40 50 you'll have like uh, the harmonics and and here as well like minus 10 minus 20 minus 30 the ones that are on the negative side can be really ignored because we're only considered with this part right for this case we can ignore the negative side and here we can actually filter these out with a good filter right because they're all happening at uh, 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 regular intervals uh, you can just remove them not a big deal fine you're cool now and M represents the order of the harmonic. For example, 20 is the second order harmonic. 30 is the third order harmonic. Okay? So this is not a big deal anyways. But we have a case too, where the V in is given by cosine of omega 1 T plus cosine of omega 2 T. For example, for, uh, before I continue there, this is called a single frequency or single tone in uh, input okay and here we're using two frequency dual frequency or dual tone or double tone input right so the harmonics for this will happen at m omega 1 plus n omega 2 right and we know that I've given omega 1 the value of 10 let's say omega 2 has a value of 12 these omega 1 and omega 2 are pretty closely spaced right uh, pretty close to each other so uh, the harmonics uh, the order of the harmonics is given by uh, modulus of n, m plus modulus of n okay so we will we will actually uh, list all these before we continue I'm, I'm just letting you know all right so these are the order of the harmonics now what kind of harmonics is this thing going to produce based on this equation see this is the input right and the output is what a naught plus a one v in plus a two v in squared plus a three v in cubed, right? So v in would produce just omega one plus omega two and omega one minus omega two. That's, you're fine. V in squared will produce what? Two omega one. Uh, let me write v in squared here and put a little implies thingy and 2 omega 2 and uh, omega 1 minus omega 2 and uh, omega 1 plus omega omega 2 sorry so if you actually use these numbers and plot it on a little f50 what do you get 10 is the characteristic frequency and that's here right you have a 20 term appearing and you have a 24 term appearing and you have omega 1 minus omega 2 is minus 2, 10 minus 12 is minus 2, and you have something here, minus 2, 10, 20, and you have another uh, at 12, right? And this is 24. And here you have omega 1 plus omega 2 is you have 22, right? So again, these are pretty far spaced, so we can remove them, right? We can filter them out, right? But what happens? when you have the harmonics terms of the VN cubed term, right? You have three omega one, and look here, the order of the harmonic, as I said, is given by the absolute value of M plus absolute value of N. So you have a second order harmonic, second order harmonic, one plus one, one plus one, so two and two, right? Order of the harmonics is two here for VN squared. Here, VN cubed, similarly speaking, we'll have three omega one, th three omega two, 2 omega 1 plus omega 2, right? And uh, you'll have 2 omega 2 plus omega 1. And you'll have 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 and 2 omega 2 minus omega 1. Okay? You can pause this video and just check these terms if, if everything is clear. Okay, it took me a lot of time to understand. Um, 
So uh, we already know that omega 1 is 10 and omega 2 is 12, right? If you actually put these on a FFT, you can forget these. They're going to be 30, 36, you're fine. This is again going to be like 32, and this is again going to be about 34. They're all going to happen after 30, you're fine. So you can remove them, right? And everything can also have a negative, mind you. So you can have these at negative side, and all those can be filtered. After 30 can be filtered, not a big problem. Look at this. These two terms, let me put them in red. Not red, actually, but whatever color this is, right? So, just think where this will occur. Let me first draw where our main signals are, 10 and 12, right? And these will happen where? 20 minus 12, which is 8. So you'll have one at 8. Uh, we'll have a little one at 8 here. And here, 24 minus 10, which is 14, and you have something here, right? Now, filtering these is not a big problem, but your pass band of an amplifier generally is, is mentioned like this. You have a little space here beyond your uh, main signals. What are you going to do? You're, you're, gonna, you're, imp you're including your harmonics inside the signal. This is something that is undesired, okay? So, and this is called distortion, right? Third order distortion, that's what it means. Third order harmonic harmonics causing distortion, right? And they're getting modulated with your own uh, original signals. It's also called inner modulation distortion. Everything else can be removed, right? Everything else can be removed, but not these things. So we have to understand and, 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 and um, we have to now figure out where exactly these will happen when we say V in cubed we have to understand where so so let's plot the output versus input curve right It'll go like this with a slope of 1, and then it'll saturate at, at larger input values. All right. Uh, if this is not clear, I, I would suggest going back to David Pozar's microwave engineering book and checking it out. Uh, it's a pretty interesting concept. So if, at larger input powers, your output is getting saturated. OK? Just understand that much. And then you're going to have a V in squared term and V in cubed term so if this has a slope of one your v in squared will have a slope of two right which will be steeper than this and it'll probably go like this All right slope of two and suppose you want to have a slope of three it'll go something like this steeper than the slope of two right so forget my uh, skewed lines so when it intersects the dotted line here, what does the dotted line mean? Ideally speaking, if input power is increasing, output power should increase, right? But it doesn't. So this point, if it increased in the same way, if the, uh, uh, the output power increased with input power linearly in the same way, this point is what? Second order intersect. ICPT for just now. Okay. Uh, I will continue in the second part.